Hi everybody, Robert Hefner here again. And we've gotten a lot of traction and questions about our systems at Hefner Energy regarding the Oklahoma minerals and royalties market. So what I'm gonna to do today is actually lift the skirt and show you in real time some of our systems that we use. Again, they're, the, well, not again, but they are the end use systems. There's a lot that goes into it prior. I'm gonna stay out of the weeds there. I'm gonna show you the end result that we use to not only mark our assets to market in real time, but also to better understand the market here in Oklahoma. Without further ado, I'm gonna switch over to my screen where you should be viewing uh, the market between the period of January 1st, 2015 and today. During that period of time, there were 80,779 records, uh, meaning deeds, that changed hands. Those are mapped here on the right. Um, as you zoom in, you get more detail and you'll get down to the well level and you'll start, start seeing well sticks as well. Um, it is a good thing to go ahead and note, we do not cover Caddo County. That is something that we could cover if we wanted to, but we didn't have the interest there. Uh, we could add Woods and, out, and Garfield as well, but they were largely counties that we weren't interested in at the time. Um, so the rest of the counties that we are interested in, which are primarily your scoop and stack counties, are all included in this analysis. And as you can see over time, you can see who the biggest players are. Um, and as a portion of the total, where did those deals transact? This is not number of deeds. This is transaction value. So $4.75 billion have been spent in Oklahoma during this time period. Um, you can see that down here, the line chart portion is the count of the deeds for the, for the given month. The bar chart portion is the total consideration for that given month. So here in June of 2017, $206.97 million were spent on an average price per acre of $8,328 per acre. If I select down to that one month, everything will update. You can see where those transactions took place. You could see who was active and you could see as a percentage of the whole, what counties were active as well. All of this is very dynamic. It allows us to see when stuff is hot, when stuff is cold and who is driving the market. So interestingly enough, Long Point is the biggest player in town. You can see here mapped their entire position, um, it, which does appear a little bit stack heavy with some merge and scoop exposure as well. You can also see when they were active. So you could, uh, I guess, what is that? 2016 through 2017, they were quite active. Um, and then the market got real frothy from 17, 18, and up into the first quarter of 19 before it tapered off. Um, Long Point's activity seems to have tapered off with that as well. Mineral resources, a very different story. They didn't really get hot and heavy until 2018. And judging by these peaks, as well as their percentage of the whole, they really have driven the market since 2018. Any of these we can dive further into. These are the three primary areas for minerals up in the western southwest stack, very gassy up here. This is Project Springboard 1. And then you have one, two, three, and a fourth trend uh, for the rest of their buying position. That represents almost $400 million purchased. Echo Minerals, another fun one. They were an early entrant to the game. They were largely out of the game during the frothy period and they kind of came back in and then they're gone again. So um, if you're curious about Echo's position, heavy stack, heavy scoop, nothing really in between in the merge. Uh, just for fun, here's Hefner Energy. We were primarily active and are primarily active in the springboard one, um, as well as some of the stuff in the stack, a little extensional stuff out here. You could see when we were active as well. And during this time period, I guess we are the, I don't know, 10th largest player in the game. So this is step one. Step two, let's start dissecting what that looks like on a play basis. During the same period of time, 2015 through current, you can see the biggest uh, considerations paid are in Blaine County and the stack makes up the vast majority of the market, over 50% during this period, in fact. The scoop, meanwhile, was a, a good piece of it um, during that period as well, albeit a little less. And then you have the rest of it, the Northwest Extension, uh, this, I believe, is the other, here's the Arcoma, very, very small portion. 
and then you have the granite wash, everything west of basically Dewey County. Um, so anytime you select any of this, it'll automatically filter, and then we go down even further. And mind you, as we go, we're gonna get more and more granular. Now we're looking at things on a county basis. You'll notice that Blaine and Grady County make up over 50% of the market during this period, with 1.3 billion being spent in Blaine County versus 1 billion in Grady. Um, if you highlight just those two, you can see here on the chart, it's quite frothy. And you'll see that early on the scoop or Blaine County was quite hot from 16 through 18 while not making up that large of a piece uh, thereafter. Um, another thing you'll very briefly and quickly notice is the activity is absolutely atrocious from uh, really after the first three months of 2020, which is when COVID hit in and ever since. On a dollar per acre basis, you can see how that has played out across the whole state here. So we got in the frothy times, 17 to 18, we got up to on average in this month was 17,000 an acre paid in this month, which was April of 2018, $16,000 per acre on average paid. Um, as, as far as the scoop, the scoop is better than the rest of the state. So the averages, you can see the in the, in the solid darker bar chart here, the faded away bar chart is what the state averages are. So generally speaking, the scoop is more valuable than the rest of the state. The stack is not as valuable, um, although it had some pretty frothy months over here, averaging $26,000 per acre. My hunch is that was due to the um, spending habits of Riverstone uh, backed Teton range. In the scoop, a lot of this was driven, uh, you know, not by private equity as much, uh, a lot of it being driven by continental resources and long point minerals. So anyway, you get these, these more and more granular views. Then we get into the actual data set. So here's the state again. This is every transaction that's occurred during this, the last five years. So that's 68,300 deeds that we track. Again, this is real time. So I'm recording this on the 8th, it's Monday. Nothing's happened uh, Monday, Saturday, Sunday. So the fifth is our most recent data transaction. And you'll notice actually that Westgate Mineral Group looks to have acquired from quite a few people out in Atoka County. Um, but that's not necessarily very interesting. Either way, we can go and select some of these and it'll automatically zoom into these data points. So you'll notice it's largely out here in one North 14 East. You can see that they paid about $500 an acre to purchase all of this. Um, Moreover, you can see how many acres they spent. The more fun part for the rest of us is I want to see what these averages are. 522,000, that is a data anomaly. Um, somebody misfiled their deed and that stuff does exist. But when you want to look at something that is more granular and you say, I want to look at Project Springboard, which is right here in central Grady County, townships six and seven north, five and six west. We can go lasso those transactions where we actually know what was paid for these particular deeds. So I've selected all of a sudden down here, you're getting to see every single one of those selections, Hefner Energy heavy in there, obviously. Um, the Mineral Resources Company, which is Continental Resources, Echo Minerals, Brigham Minerals, now publicly traded, and a few others. At any point in time, if we want to filter and say, oh, well, I want to know who paid the most per acre. Again, data anomaly here by peak, that was just misfiled. But down here, these are very real data points where Continental has paid above $40,000 an acre. And if you don't believe me, I can literally click it, bring it into view. You'll see that 1.8 million was spent here and I can literally view this actual transaction. So 64.76 acres, Fr Fran Russell, the mineral resources, there it is, folks. Um, but this is how we get very granular. This is how we mark to market our actual portfolio. This is how we understand who's paying what where. This is under this is understanding also who how much we can buy for on the ground. Um, very powerful stuff. I know a lot of people are interested in this. Um, if you want to very quickly, I can even go filter down to mineral resources again, which is continental resources, and you can see their entire position over that five year period. Again, up here in the stack, springboard, um, and a few other trends down in the scoop. 
The interesting part that I'll say here, once you get into this granular view, you'll notice that Continental has spent $393 million during that period. Um, if I go literally lasso Project Springboard again, you'll notice that Continental has spent $176 million out of their $393 million total dollars during this period right there in Project Springboard. That is some pretty interesting stuff. That's some really nice acreage. We're proud to own a bunch of it. And I hope this has been helpful for all of you today. Um, I'm going to switch back to myself. Hey, um, so I hope that was helpful. I hope you all enjoyed that. If, uh, if you're interested in leveraging any of the technologies that Hefner Energy has built, as was shown today, we do offer our services uh, for a fee. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're looking forward to expanding beyond just Oklahoma as well. Uh, holler at me with any questions. Would love to answer them. Hope you're doing well, and we'll talk to you next week.